Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at government reaction when it comes to transfer pricing. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the or e Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD. This topic is covered in international ac accounting or taxation course. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,000 500 plus accounting auditing finance and tax lectures this is a list of all the courses that i cover including cpa material on my website you can find additional information such as powerpoint slides notes true false multiple choice and if you're studying for your cpa exam 2000 plus cpa questions now if you don't understand what international transfer pricing is please look in the description i have recordings that might help you kind of prepare your yourself for this recording so we're going to look at the government reaction specifically the about from the oecd countries and the next session we'll look at the u.s government reaction so national tax authorities obviously they're not dumb in a sense that they know that multinational companies they may use discretionary transfer pricing to avoid paying income taxes import duties strategies for withholding taxes that we looked at in the prior session so on and so forth so what happened is most countries have guidelines regarding what will be considered an acceptable transfer price for tax purposes so just because the multinational decided that's the transfer price the government they might be able to say well they could they could challenge you okay so across countries these guidelines can conflict and what happens sometime you could have double taxation when the price accepted in one country may be disallowed in another so it's 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 a very complicated issue in the real world so we're going to be looking at the OECD guidelines and basically the OECD guidelines started to, devel to develop those transfer pricing as early as the, the late 1970s and they supplemented or amended those rules over the years because rules are always changing but the basic rule is that transfer price must be made at arm's length okay arm's length okay what does arm's length mean it's the prices that you would charge between independent parties in the same circumstances so what would you charge what would you charge the other party if it was an external party if that's the price you would charge them then your then your transfer price is acceptable now there are many many exceptions many rules but that's the general rule so the guidelines also acknowledge the need for the companies to document and this is important the arm length nature of the transfer pricing so you want to document you want to have record of why did you choose this price okay so the idea is that by adopting the oecd guidelines member will avoid conflicts conflict with tax and authorities okay but remember rules are only a model they don't have any enforcement power so the oecd rules are not guidelines let's be more specific guidelines they're not actual laws so they cannot be implemented but those are guidelines if you follow you should be safe in that sense okay but also each countries they have their own transfer pricing but most of them they follow those rules so because each country is different therefore they might have specific rules so we have something called the oecd country by country reporting which is a report we're going to look at briefly in this session i might revisit it when i look at the u.s transfer pricing model and it's it's based it's it stems from the oecd base erosion and profit sharing the bips act includes something called action 13. so what does that mean it means transfer price and documentation and country by country reported which provide a template for the country by country by multinational enterprise so simply put you have this country by country reporting you fill it up basically as a form and it's a template that the oecd countries do uses so it's it's the the report is intended to provide the tax authorities with the information that can be used that can be used to identify situation in which companies have the capability of shifting profit to low or no income or to no tax jurisdiction so basically it's a form to assist tax authorities in targeting their audit and building a case if there is a case to be built so you have to kind of prepare this country by country country by country reporting so what do you have to report so simply put let's take a look at this kind of important form in this context so it required the multinational to annually file a report with their home tax and authorities that disclose for each jurisdiction in which it conduct business first the amount of revenue the before tax profit so if you are reporting a lot of revenues and your before tax profit is low they might question that why do you have a lot of revenues but not profit all what i'm saying is those are guidelines how much taxes you paid well you might be reporting a lot of revenues but only three percent in taxes then you might be questioned so simply put those numbers they can be used as a guideline that makes it easier for tax and authorities to look at your record and determine whether you 
an audit is required or a closer look is required. The number of employees, the capital that you have, you are employing, and that and your tangible asset. In addition to that, each each entity within the, the jurisdiction must describe separately with an indication of its business activity. So what exactly do you do? So this way, if you're in the restaurant business, you might have a certain gross margin. If you're in the retail business, you might have other gross margin. So it tells the company, tells the, the taxing authority a lot about your business. So this is in a, in a brief, the OECD response. In the next session, we would look at the U.S. transfer pricing rule because the U.S. is basically represent, represent a large portion of the international trade. As always, I would like to remind you on my website, I do have additional lectures, additional courses, additional resources. If you are interested, please visit my website. Consider subscribing as it is an investment in your career. Good luck in studying.